Hello. Recently I repaired a NTSC uh, Super Beta video recorder which I'd had imported from America, model SL HF600. I was so pleased with myself for finally fixing that machine, though it did take me about a year to do. You know, that wasn't the very highest specification machine. Uh, there were other models such as the SL HF900, but there's no chance of getting hold of one of those in the UK. Special but delivery! Ooh! I wonder what's in this. Interestingly, there's some Japanese writing on this box, so maybe originally this has come from Japan. And maybe this newspaper gives us an idea when it was imported into the UK. So what do we have? Uh, SL HF 900, beta 1, 2 and 3. Um, this drop down panel appears to be slightly broken. The front loading mechanism is not well that uh, needs some serious work and it's leaning over i think one of the feet might be missing not sure how they're going to stay on are these original or maybe these have been stuck on as an afterthought i think these are the original feet perhaps i should take all of those off and around the back yes it's a japanese machine isn't it so I think what this is saying is these that's input and output one and two um, and the reason it says PCM that's for it's saying PCM or video that's I think what's what that's saying and I think they have remote control connections uh, don't know what that is it looks like an S video but it's not um, some antenna connections there power out so this has got a captive power cable. Uh, I prefer the type with a, a separate power cable. Uh, oh, so what's the supply voltage going to be? Oh, this all appears a little bit bent here. This is nice and smooth there and it's raised here. So there's some issues around an impact maybe, I'm not sure. Yes, let's check the supply voltage on this one. 100 volts. So I'll reconfigure my isolation transformer for 100 volts rather than 110, 120. Some of the markings are in Japanese and some are in English. Beta 1S it does here. Not sure if the HF600 supports that and the high band switch. Okay, so we need to take it apart and see what's going on with this front loading mechanism. Uh, there may be other faults too. I'll take it apart before I even think about connecting power to it, I think. I see what's happened here, I think. Something's been pulled across the front and it's caught this and ripped it up. So maybe it had a bigger machine on the top, a big industrial machine, and it's damaged this. So this needs a little bit of uh, plastic repair work, I think. The um, damaged door here may be part of the same impact damage I suspect it is. Maybe I'll take this whole front off. It's not obvious to me how this um, jog wheel arrangement comes off. It doesn't is the answer to that. You leave that on. A bit of plastic has just fallen out which I think is part of the uh, front door here supposed to be on that so yeah there's been a bit of an impact at the front here so if I can glue that back on there then I should be able to repair this a little bit and get the um, front door to work again properly okay take that off and glue it I've glued this back together at least for the time being with super glue which seems to suit the damage best I've still got to build the plastic work up that it mounts onto but bigger concern is this so there's the power on LED, I think. It goes on the top of the board. And this hole of the corner of the board and the on-off switch is smashed. So I'll have to see what I can do with that. I'll take the board off and uh, see what we're up against. Okay, so my uh, challenges immediately are that uh, this PCB I've now glued together. Though I still need to make one connection that goes from that resistor to the LED. But I've got to find a way to mount it so that it sits in its place properly. That's the headphone adjustment level there. And it needs to mount with this LED 
behind the switch. So I need to mount it in the correct spot, but all the original mounting uh, brackets have been smashed. So that's going to be a little challenging. I've also got to finish repairing this board. Uh, then the door here, I've glued that at one end and that's okay, but the uh, slot that it fits into at this end is smashed and missing. So I'm going to have to build up some plastic for that. Uh, so I've got a lot of cosmetic work to do here. Uh, also this hinge, we're missing a little bit from that hinge as well. So there's a little bit more uh, repair work to do to the hinge down here. So lots of uh, plastic welding and gluing to do. Okay, I've repaired this PCB that's got the headphone volume control and power button and power LED on it. Uh, I'm probably going to have to just double-sided sticky that into place because uh, whatever mounting bracket work was in there, it's gone. Uh, this, I need to rebuild the corner and then assemble that. But before I worry about that, clearly the cassette carriage is in all wonky. So uh, I'll take the cassette carriage out and find out what's wrong. This reminds me a little bit of SLF 25, which got plastic uh, cassette carriage runners and they break and they're not necessarily fixable. So that could be a bit difficult. So let's take the carriage out and have a look. Also interesting, I've never seen this color of loading belt before. It's kind of red. Never seen that before. Normally it's a sort of amber color. Okay, I've done some cosmetic work to this uh, front cabinet. I squeezed it together and then heated it with a hot air gun to try to get it back into shape and then put some uh, epoxy resin on the inside. So hopefully now that's a lot straighter from the front, albeit it's got this bulge at the side. We are probably going to have to live with that bulge. Maybe I can heat it back into shape some more later. But uh, everything looks okay there. Lining this up is going to be a bit fiddly because the original clip at the top here that's supposed to hold the top of the PCB, the clip's gone and the top of the PCB is gone. So I'm going to have to uh, attach that by bodgy means. And you've got to be very careful because the headphone socket can fall off really easily. Now, as it happens, uh, just yesterday uh, in my time, uh, one of these was featured by 12 volt vids. Uh, and on his machine, well, it wasn't his, somebody had sent it to him. Uh, this was all intact, actually, and it would have been really nice to have got that scrap machine because it ended up as a dead loss. But one of the things was he was showing that a tooth breaks inside here and causes the front loading carriage or basket as he is calling it to uh, go out of alignment like this has so that's probably what's wrong with it we'll take it off and have a look and if we need to uh, uh, order a new gear they are apparently being made by somebody so let's take this off For some reason it seems a bit stuck at this end maybe I'll have to take the uh, front board off or at least slacken it off No, okay, I didn't need to take the front off. It was just catching on that. So, I'll just reassemble what I've taken off at the front. Now you can see this is wrong because this is further forward than that side. The right is further forward than the left. It's got a, a timing issue. Now these gears, do they have a timing associated with them? I think they do, so we're gonna to have to be have to refer to the service manual when we fit these. And this is the gear here which fails. It loses teeth. Do you know I'm not so sure that has got a missing tooth? Alright, that's it in its uh, down position. Let's take the carriage to the top. The 
fully ejected position. Could I reassemble it now? You can't just push it in, you have to release a trap. You get these traps on a lot of VHS techs as well that stops it from going in without a tape. That looks right now. So there's the trap, you need to pull it out of the way. Well, that's looking fine now. Let's see if I can reassemble it. What doesn't feel right is this. I'm sure the uh, spring inside this is supposed to load that. So uh, something's become disconnected in here. Or the spring snapped. don't think the spring snapped. Or one of the a catch that it's supposed to hang on to is snapped. Appears to be intact. At the moment I've just put this together by hand. I've not uh, referred to the service manual yet. Just want to check that if I turn this it can get the carriage fully down. Oh, why is that slopping about? See when it's fully down this should be held down with the spring that's in here. Okay I think I have the alignment set correctly with these holes lining up with the holes underneath. So there's a notch in this first gear lines up with that hole and then there's a hole here that lines up with the, hole, the holes in the green and white and then a hole here lining up with the first gear and then we can refit the worm drive. I believe that's correctly timed. Though I could be a tooth out somewhere. It all looks straight. I'll refit the screws and then wind it by hand and see if it can go through its operation. No, it's not correctly at the bottom. Also, I don't think this switch is operating correctly. No, I've got that all mistimed. You see the switch is not engaged now, the switch there is not operated and when you put the, push the tape in it should push that first gear along far enough that activates the switch and then drives the motor. So I think that is right now. Though I could still be a tooth out somewhere. Hey look, we released the cassette, the release this um, blocking mechanism for not having a tape in there, push on it and it activates the switch. I believe that's correct. I'm having a bit of trouble winding it by hand. I think I'm going to actually try it in the machine. Okay, I've not fitted the door yet because I've got to repair the plastic work on this side. But uh, ignoring that for the time being, refit what's left of this uh, power switch. I'm ready for the first great switch on. Uh, I've configured my transformer for about 101 volts, so that should be about right. There's the power button. First thing will be whether we get any clock operation at all. This is all a little bit scary. Okay, ready for our first power up. Well, we have a clock operation. It's a bit dim, but that's fine. Press the on button. What's left of it? Machine lights up. That's all good. This is where it's likely to go horribly wrong, but let's see. Uh, it's not detecting the cassette. Thought we'd made that switch. Also, the power LED is not working, so obviously you didn't get that quite right. The power up and down is working, but the power LED is not. Let's look at that again. But uh, for whatever reason, it's not seeing the cassette. Okay, I will just look at the switch. Power it down, let's look at the switch. No, it appears that I haven't got that quite assembled right because we're not making the switch. All right, let's take that apart again. Okay, since we last spoke, I've taken this out and retimed the gears. I've also 
mounted up some plastic here from scrap VHS tape what else so hopefully that will properly hold the uh, front door and when you put this in hopefully also it will activate the switch let's see if that works now oh you know what did and it doesn't anymore and I'm beginning to think that every time I put a tape in it breaks it which implies something's wrong doesn't it because that's not right now that's way away from the switch what should be happening is that switch should be ro that cam there should be activating the switch to tell it to start driving what should happen now when you put the cassette in is about this point it should make the switch but it's barely moving the front of the leaf switch it's nowhere near being ready to actually activate it so this gear is not in quite the right place I've been working on this for hours and getting nowhere oh my repair my door repair has um, snapped off oh that's very sad I'll have to repair that again okay we'll do without the door for a minute I'm beginning to think I might just um, short out that switch for a second just to get it to uh, to work because me and this switch don't seem to be getting on okay let's try shorting out this switch for a moment maybe it will attempt to load nothing why is it not driving a loading motor with the switch made I find that very odd when I put a tape in it isn't correctly operating the switch and even if it did operate the switch the loading still doesn't work still struggling with this um, loading mechanism but I just thought I'd take a few seconds to look at the uh, LED problem and it's a little bit deeper than I thought because the line that should drive the LED is not doing anything the line to the switch is at 5 volts until you press the switch it goes down so that's working fine but the 5 volt supply to the LED does not work the LED itself is fine I've just tested it so uh, that's very suspicious isn't it okay a big thank you is due at this point to 12 volt vids who did a super video on how to realign these uh, front loading mechanisms uh, and it turns out that uh, there are two alignment marks on the first gear and you use one when in the fully ejected position for setting up the two uh, gears at the front and then you move over to the second marker before putting in these two uh, where you have the alignment molds, holes at the bottom so when you've done that correctly uh, the spring loaded green gear here has some give in it which allows you to put the tape in and make this switch so this now appears to be properly set uh, it's sort of it's stuck there because it's not fully late uh, and there we are fully ejected when it's in the fully ejected position the front door opens nicely I've repaired this corner again but I'm going to add a bit more glue to strengthen that so I think I'm happy with that now uh, our bigger problem is why this LED didn't come on because I believe that means we lo we've lost a 5 volt rail somewhere and that's why even when the switch is made it's not starting the uh, loading mechanism uh, so the clock works when we power it up let's show you that so I can switch it on here and the clock is working so some of the supplies are working but there's no 5 volts to here uh, on this connector to the LED so I think we've got a 5 volt rail out somewhere it may have been blown by when this was taken when, when this smashed up maybe it shorted out that 5 volt so we're going to have to go into the uh, power systems and see why that's not working and I hope that that's the reason that it's not taking any notice of when this switch is made right I'll refit the uh, front loading mechanism and we can start working on the electronics later but now with the uh, cassette carriage refitted I believe it's correctly timed and I've done some more repair work on this left hinge so I think that's good but what I wanted to show you is the power LED 
doesn't work when you switch the unit on, but look what happens at the instant I switch the machine on. The mains power, watch. Interesting, isn't it? Flash, flash. So uh, clearly some sort of power problem. Okay, the uh, supply to that LED is not 5 volt as I said, it's 9 volts. And I've traced that back, there's a 9 volt supply, it should come out of pin 10 of the regulator board at the back, which contains an STK5441 regulator chip, which is the one that I had to change on the other Super Beta machine I worked on. So there's every possibility that we have a bad regulator, but I'll uh, go look for the 9.1 switched supply. Our regulator is here and I really need to get to the 9 volt output but it's a little bit awkward to power it up and get to that connector. I have to find a way to do that. Right, I've soldered a test lead onto the STK5441 pin 10 so I can access that with the unit sort of reasonably well assembled for safety's sake. I'll also confirm that that has continuity through to the front panel where the uh, power LED is. Right, so that's the on. So we've already pretty much proven that the uh, 9 volt line is not there. Um, I'll just confirm it with actual voltage measurement, but uh, it's not. So we need a regulator chip. Okay, so I'll switch on and we'll see if that blips up for a moment. It does for a little bit, <clears throat> and then we switch the on button and we get 0.38 of a volt. Okay, either we've got a dead short somewhere, which I don't see because that wouldn't have gone up to the higher voltage if there was a dead short, or we have a bad STK5441 regulator. Now, frustratingly, I bought two last time and I can't find my spare so I need to go look for it or order another one from somewhere and there's a big problem with counterfeit parts. Let's just do a DC test, I know this is not necessarily uh, conclusive but do a quick DC test on the 9 volt line to ground. Uh, bear in mind that this is also feeding back into the regulator chip and it's what about 209 ohms? Don't think that would be a overload. So that would be I equals V over 201 ohms. Uh, what about 45 milliamps? No, that's not going to overload. So I think we can safely say that we need a new STK5441. Now annoyingly, I've lost my uh, spare one. I ordered two last time when I was working on the HF600. And what came out of the HF600 was this. And this is counterfeit. The original number had been scratched off. Whatever this is, it wasn't an STK5441. So I'm going to have to try to find a good supplier for one of those parts, and we'll come back to this uh, later once that's arrived. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.